Welcome to Significant TV, Significant Stories from Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and with me in the studio today is Beth Brabatsky, president of Iris Creative Incorporated. Beth, Iris Creative Group Incorporated. Why that name? Well, you see how hard it is to say and to spell Brodowski. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> when I first started, I did call the company Brodowski Design. My father-in-law is a very prominent physician, mm -hmm. and I used to joke to him that someday someone's going to come up to him and say, are you related to that famous designer? Ah. Uh. That all was fun and good in the beginning, but over the first few years of my business, I noticed people would come up to me and say things like, design, oh, is that interior? Or what do you do? Uh -huh. uh, different things like that. And I also got tired of spelling all the time. Mm -hmm. So I realized that my goal was to become a multi-person business, not to be a solo freelancer. And I just really felt that for me, since I didn't start my business with... Uh, a lot of clients. I really did have to start from scratch. Mm -hmm. That my name didn't have the recognition in the in the group that I wanted to work with. So I decided to shift it to something that was a demonstrated vision, and that's mm -hmm. what iris is supposed to represent. Yes. It's not about the flower. Ah. It's about the iris of your eye. Ah. Our original tagline was "Focus your vision," and so I wanted something that was short and simple to spell and simple to say. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's where we came up with Iris. Wow, that's that's beautiful, yeah. that's beautiful. And I didn't probably properly welcome you, but I was just so excited about the name of your company that I really wanted the audience to know about that. So welcome. Thank you. Welcome, significant to me. So yeah, you. yeah, this is totally cool, totally cool. I've really admired you and your work, and I had a chance through another opportunity to visit your team, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm always kind of curious when I have folks on the show, how did they get started? And I always like to frame it of what's a significant moment that sort of started you on that path to entrepreneurship? And you talked a little bit about your father-in-law, but why you and why entrepreneurship? Well, um, I had been working for a nonprofit organization. I had started right out of a college. Actually, in fact, I think I was an intern there. So I started mm. there, stayed at the job, because honestly, I think it's always a tough job market and it's always hard to get jobs. And I ended up going and working at a company and moving up very quickly. I was a supervisor by, by the time I was 24. Ooh, I became an art director. Nice. But also during this time, I got married and had two babies. Mm -hmm. And what I really started seeing in myself was that I wanted an opportunity to make the kind of money I wanted to make without mm -hmm. somebody else telling me I couldn't. No. <laughs> I wanted the opportunity to mm be as creative as I wanted to be and not be limited towards the type of things. You know, when you work in a job, your work is pretty much what's the next folder that someone right. puts on your desk. Right. So I was starting to feel after eight years pretty limited by that. And the third factor was that I didn't want someone else to tell me when I could see my children. In Ooh. no way did I want to be a stay-at-home mother. Okay, I, That was very clear to me from the beginning, but when you have a traditional job employed by somebody else, 9 to 5, mm -hmm. it's really hard to go to a poetry reading at 10.30. It's really <laughs> hard, when you're, hard when your kid wakes up sick. Right, you know, all right, of that right. juggling, especially yeah. when your, your partner or your spouse also has a job that is difficult to leave, it can make those things difficult. So it was a little bit of logistics and a little bit of, I really believed in my parenting that you, you only get one shot at each moment in your child's mm -hmm. life. I didn't want to miss it in a way that I didn't have control over. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I so I, I decided those are the kind of reasons I, and I was looking for a job mm -hmm. and at every job that I looked at I could find two out of three. Mm. And so at that moment in our lives, I happened to have been 30 when this mm -hmm. was going on, ah, so maybe that had Korea. something to do with it. Mm -hmm. And my then husband had just gotten a job which was at a large corporation and had a stable salary and had really good benefits. So we realized at the time that in the short term, the easiest thing to pass up on was the short term money. Mm -hmm. And so I decided, if not now, when, uh -huh. let's take a leap. <laughs> and, and I tried it, and I remember telling him at the time, you know, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to learn so much that I'll be able to get a job anywhere. And mm -hmm. within a pretty short amount of time, he told me, this better work because you're completely unemployable now. <laughs> so 20 years later, I think it's worked out 20 okay. 20 years later, congratulations. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Wow, what an entrepreneurial journey. Mm -hmm. 
So, so over those 20 years, what's what kept you going? I mean, uh, statistically, businesses mm -hmm. fail within the first five years. So you exactly surpassed. I kept going, yeah. and I think I think it was a lot of different things. I think some of what kept me going um, was this the the, the challenge mm -hmm. that I I've been either forced to or gotten to do things that I never would have expected mm -hmm. that I would have done. Even even little things like I've learned bookkeeping, which mm -hmm. I went to art school in New York mm -hmm. City. In a million years, I never even thought I would wanted to learn that. Um, and I still didn't want to learn it when I learned it. But <laughs> right. looking back, I realized that there have been things that I would have said I can't do, that that's mm -hmm. too hard for me. I went to art school because I'm not a math girl. And if you want something bad enough, then the other things that you sometimes have to learn to pick up the phone and make a cold call, oh, to yeah, cold understand calls. how your books work yourself so that you can make good decisions are all things that I didn't choose to learn, but I'm really proud of the fact that I can do things that I didn't expect that I would have even tried, much less been able to master. So that's, I have a lot of pride in that. And mm -hmm. that and just the pride of there's an old saying, you know, it's like a samurai saying mm -hmm. that says, you know, fall, get knocked down seven times, get up eight. Yes. You know, yes. I think that the the tenacity mm -hmm. that I've learned to just keep pushing forward, just keep swimming, as you know, mm -hmm. Dory the fish from yes, yes. you know says, you know, <laughs> well, it, yeah. I, I don't think I I don't think I would have built certain muscles, certain skills if I'd stayed at a job where somebody was just going to put the next thing on my desk. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow, passion and purpose. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's really, it's been a really exciting journey and I've learned a lot about myself along the way. Mm -hmm. I, you know, there was a point in the, the entrepreneurial journey at 2009 when, mm. you know, the world was pretty much falling right. apart for right. everyone. Right. I I was just shocked at where things were. No, no business was coming in. None of the, none of my current clients were doing anything. It was like everyone was in a deer caught in the headlights moment. Right. And that was for me, you know, in addition to starting the business, my pivotal moment, which turned me from what I consider a business owner, mm -hmm. somebody that went out on my own to give it a shot, mm -hmm. into what I believe is, is the entrepreneurial version of myself. Mm -hmm. Because I'd spent that summer, you know, freaking out like everyone else. <laughs> I'm glad you'd been Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and, sure. and, and chasing down a piece of business that I got so locked into that mode of, I have to make this work. I have to get this guy to hire me. I have to I have to move this along that you know laser focus can be a really good thing or it can also be a myopic thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I I was working on it so hard that at one night I was on the phone with my father and my father is also an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Started a business and um and he was on the phone with me and he said to me you're chasing down this thing it's going to kill you it's going mm. to destroy the business that you had and my parents are at that age where they're both on the phone at the same time <laughs> and um and so i remember my mother but they're both on the phone and my my mother said you know well bill you know you're being a little hard on her you know be nice to our girl and my father on the phone said to my mother Catherine, she needs to hear this and Ooh. my mother walks on water for my father he mm. never ever says anything to her. And it honestly wasn't even what he said after that. It was the fact that he told my mother, no, you're wrong and I need to say this. Mm -hmm. That had a massive, massive impact on me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I did the whole, <laughs> I'm fine, dead. And I hung up the phone, cried. And uh, a couple days later was actually my birthday and I was over at my parents' house and my father sat me down and he said to me, you're making decisions out of fear. Mm. and mm. you're never going to move forward that way. You need to let go of this and turn and face forward. And he wow. did some other things to help me along the way that allowed me to change my perspective. He invested some money in my business to help me make it through, and he handed me a check, and honestly, I didn't even cash the check for six months because his wow. faith in me and the conversations and recognizing that when you're making decisions out of fear, you're not seeing the big picture of your business. So for the last, you know, since 2009, I've really been focusing on that and trying to recognize when I'm doing things because I'm afraid and actually to learn when to use fear to push me forward because mm, sometimes it's easy to choose to not do things right. and I start to run, I'm starting to try and look at what am I backing away from? 
because it seems too scary, because the money frightens me, because it feels maybe it's too big for me and that's not me and I, who am I to do that? Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I'm trying to chase what scares me. Mm. Now that's significant. Yes. That is significant. Wow. So you've talked about a significant moment, actually several. You've talked about your business and your passion and purpose. What about some results that you're really proud of within your business or that your business is maybe clients or your team? Mm -hmm. What's something that as a result I you really, can point to? I think I have a... Uh, Something that I tried, I, I started a podcast a few years mm, ago, nice. and sort of an internal result that I'm very proud of is that um, it, it's so silly, it's just little, but we've done a show every single week without fail, no matter where I was in the world, much less in the country. I launched it the month that my son was getting married at my house, <laughs> because, you know, why not? Let's oh, okay. add something to do it. And it's, it's a weekly show. And I am, I'm an artist. I'm a trained mm -hmm. designer. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes consistency and doing things, are, you know, is a little bit challenged for my, mm -hmm. for my monkey mind, mm -hmm. you know. And so the fact that I have cre decided I wanted to do something, stuck with it, put it out there every week, turned it into a really valuable piece of content marketing for my business, gotten tremendous feedback from my community about that the show is helpful and valuable to them, and in doing it, like you're doing, mm -hmm. brought on a series of guests of people that I never would have thought would have talked mm -hmm. to me, much less right. been guests. So I'm building up this network of people who are now in my orbit who have become amazing resources for me for new projects, for partnerships, mm -hmm. for collaborations, and for, and, and for resources to send me other guests and business. So I'm really, really proud of that of that project and that something that was just an idea in my head really got off the ground and the, the reality of it is so much more than I would have expected. That is a wonderful story and it's a wonderful way to end and actually bring us full circle because you started with sharing the why behind your name mm -hmm. and the name of your business. And so what you are sharing now is that what you saw in your business, the creativity and something that you produced. Um, and it's a wonderful reflection of you well, thank and you. where you're going. Beth, it's been a pleasure. 15 minutes goes by so quickly. It really I does. can't believe it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and it's really been a pleasure. Where can folks find out more about you and your business? Um, well, my main business is Iris Creative. So at iriscreative.com is mm -hmm. uh, the best way to reach out to me. My email is beth at iriscreative.com. And if you can spell my name, you can pretty much find me anywhere. <laughs> I spend a lot of time on Google. And please, anyone that's listening, I'd be more than happy to connect on LinkedIn. That's a, a place that I spend a lot of time communicating. Terrific. Well, Beth, thank you again for being on the show. Thank you so much. Really? It's a pleasure to be yeah. part of your network and your or uh -huh. orbit. I've learned so much from you, and I'm sure all all the listeners are going to learn so much from what you're sharing through these programs. Well, the great thing about Significant TV, which sort of brings me into my tagline, is that it really is about significant stories from significant entrepreneurs. And I am really proud to say that the guests that I bring on never fail. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hear such great things. And your stories today are really, I think, going to motivate some other women, uh, regardless of where they are in their entrepreneurial journey. So I appreciate you taking the time to share. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, folks, there you have it. Significant TV, significant stories from significant entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and I invite you to join us on our next episode.